Hey friends, Ryan the Stranger with the Weekly Word. My Weekly Word is unmasking the spirit of error. Look, I want you to understand that there is such a thing in the Bible as the spirit of error. I'll read you a scripture in a moment. Uh, recently, I was sent some clips of various prophetic ministry, and one of the things I observed right away is the teaching was erroneous, it was incorrect. Now, uh, the, the Bible teaches us Bible doctrines, foundations of the faith, and uh, it's quite possible in our Christian growth that we begin to see something about a particular doctrine we may not have seen early on. And so I, I allow for a lot of theological variants that people see different doctrines certain ways. I have brothers and sisters who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, yet we are brothers and sisters in Christ because we agree on the blood of Jesus, we agree on the gospel of grace, and salvation so I have no problem with that but but these were deeply concerning things where where things were being twisted out of context where sin was being deduced to something that there was no problem with where repentance was being taught as an old-fashioned principle and I believe the spirit of error is at work today in the earth but I believe there's a word of warning that many of us are listening to prophetic voices that are erroneous in their understanding of the Bible so let's break this down the the spirit of error is exactly what its name implies. It causes people to go into error in their belief systems and therefore in their practices. It, it, it works to twist the truth in a demonic attempt to deceive people. This is not a concept, an understanding, or an idea. This is a demon, and it's the exact opposite of the spirit of truth, and it comes from the kingdom of darkness. This demon targets believers and masterfully uses scriptural half-truths to make Christians go into error. So there's a partial truth in what this demon says, but not the full truth, and it's dangerous. It takes a doctrinal foundation oftentimes and subtly twists it. Here's the scripture. 1 John 4, 5, and 6. They are of the world, and therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. Who knows, uh, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So there is a demon called the spirit of error. We talk about false prophet, divination, all realities. But I want you to know a person, a preacher, a minister, a believer can have a spirit of error. That they are believing erroneous things and teaching erroneous things. And this is an actual demon spirit. And it's got two primary operations. Number one, it spins out false doctrines. Doctrines are foundational Christian belief systems. They guide our Christian practice. They guide our Christian living. They guide the way we pray. They guide the way we give. They guide the way we serve. They guide what we think about salvation. And this demon, the demon of error, attempts to make people under, misunderstand the scriptures and then encourages them to create false religious doctrines and beliefs that are a contradiction to the word of God. The second dimension of this demon is it is a twisting demon. Look, one of its tools is twisted or half-truths. And this hideous spirit will use twisted and half-truths to cause error in the life of a person. It's the exact same strategy that Satan used in tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden when he said to her, you shall not surely die. For God knows in that day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Look, the reality is the devil is quite clever and knows that the best way to give you spiritual poison is to mix it with some truth, with some Bible passages, with some scriptures. Twisted truth made Eve go outside of obedience and go against God's instruction and then eventually gets her and Adam outside the will of God. And they did die. They died spiritually. They were spirit beings and became flesh beings after they ate of, of the garden where God said, you're not supposed to eat of that tree. The spirit of air was there present, working through Satan. And and the spirit of error is working today, twisting the truth. So next time you listen to some preacher that is saying, you don't have to pray. You don't have to do this. You don't have to repent. You better examine those things with the word of God. And don't say, oh, but they're quoting the scripture. It's not the quoting the scripture. Many of them are saying, oh, I've got a new mystery. Ecclesiastes declares there's nothing new under the sun. God may enlighten us to his understanding, but scriptures need to be interpreted in context and they need to be interpreted uh, looking at the introspection and inspection rather not intro but inspection of the full counsel of god the word of god for example the doctrine of the laying on of hands it's from old testament to new testament 
The Old Testament, they laid hands to bless. They laid hands to release things. They laid hands uh, in various capacities. In the New Testament, same thing. Jesus uh, gives us the laying on of hands for healing, laying on of hands for ordination, laying on of hands for blessing. That's a doctrine. So somebody comes up and says, oh, you know, I've got a new revelation. And they take a half of the scripture out of context and begin telling us we don't have to lay hands on people anymore. That is incorrect or erroneous teaching and therefore fueled by a spirit of error. Satan understands you're not going back to the nightclub, many of you. You're not going back to certain patterns you got delivered out of. So the best way he could get you is to get you believing a half truth because when you believe a half truth you're also believing a half lie and the spirit of error is good at getting you to buy the lie that you never would have bought lest it come in the guise of revelation so i want you to pray through and dig into your bible foundations and avoid look if you got 20 solid preachers saying there's a problem over in this teaching there's a problem in this ministry don't you get seduced because this spirit of error has a spirit of seduction. You think that the devil just showed up in the garden and, and, and didn't mesmerize Adam and Eve? No, he mesmerized them. He mesmerized them. He seduced them. To do what? To walk away from the truth. The truth is often not as glamorous as a lie. The truth does often not feel as good as a lie. The truth often is more sacrificial than a lie. So the spirit of error will seduce you. It will lure you. It will draw you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for my friends and the authority of Jesus' name. I thank you that they stand on the truth of your word. I bind and break the spirit of error, erroneous belief systems, erroneous prophetic ministry over their lives, erroneous teaching. And I pray, God, that they would become students of your word, that they would stand upon your truth, and they would stand strong in Jesus' name. Amen.